Three months ago, I left my six-figure data science job to pursue entrepreneurship full-time. Since I have a video all about why I left that role, I won't get into that. However, here I will talk about how it's going so far and my plan for the next three months for how I'm gonna get back to my full-time salary, but now as an entrepreneur. This journey started for me on July 14th, 2023, which was my last day as a data scientist at Toyota. When I walked out the door, I had my sights on three main goals, which mapped to the three key pillars of my business. Consulting, my community called the Data Entrepreneurs, and content. My first goal for consulting was to land one single client that came through an inbound lead. So essentially a client found me through a blog that I wrote or a YouTube video that I made and reached out to me because they wanted to work together on some data science project. The second was to get 100 people in attendance across all Q3 events in the data entrepreneurs community. Third and finally was to generate $1,000 in one month from my medium blogs. And of these three goals, I only managed to hit one of them, which was land one client that came through as an inbound lead. Ironically, this was the one that I was most worried about because the relationship between content and consulting clients is a very unpredictable one. While I had always known that content was a great way to generate leads and land clients. It was all theoretical until I finally landed that first contract. And what surprised me about many of my inbound leads is that they did not come from my most popular content. In fact, the client that I'm working with currently found me through a blog that I wrote about topological data analysis, which is not only an esoteric data science technique, but is not even an approach we're using in the project that we're working on together. However, the most significant takeaway of this for me is seeing this idea of of content turning into contracts become a reality, which gave me a boost of confidence and a signal that I'm on the right path. As for the second goal of getting 100 people in attendance across all Q3 events, I fell short of this goal. While we only had 62 people in attendance, I still see this past quarter for the community to be a success. One reason for that is this goal of 100 attendees was very much a stretch goal. And a good rule of thumb when you're dealing with these types of stretch goals is that even getting 60 to 70% completion can be considered a success. This goal accomplished a higher level objective of growing the community. A few metrics that reflect that are the Discord community almost doubled in membership, our email and newsletter list almost quadrupled, and then our YouTube subscribers increased by 42x. So we went from five subscribers on YouTube to about 210, and at this point we're even past that. So this failure or success, however you wanna look at it, really inspired a new direction for the goals in Q4, which I'll touch on a little later in the video. And the final goal of generating $1,000 in earnings in one month for my Medium blog turned out to be a bit of a roller coaster ride, which I feel is very representative of my life as an entrepreneur. Medium is a blogging website, which I first discovered through technical articles coming from towards data science. I've been writing on Medium for almost three years now, putting out content about data science, entrepreneurship, and other things that I find interesting. And if you've been following me on YouTube, you probably noticed that most of my YouTube videos have an associated blog with them. In June 2023, I made almost $500 writing on Medium. And the way this works is that anytime a Medium subscriber reads one of my blogs, Medium pays me a portion of their membership fee. Coming into July 2023, my rationale was, since I won't be committing 40 hours of my week to my full-time job, I'll have more time to make more blogs on Medium. So if I double the amount of blogs that I write, I should be able to double my earnings. This sounded like a good idea until in August, something unexpected happened. Medium changed their monetization structure, which took my monthly earnings from $500 all the way down to $200, even though I was putting out more content on Medium. And so by the end of August, I had basically given up hope that I was going to hit this $1,000 goal. But I still move forward with the plan of making twice as much content on Medium. Then something unexpected unexpected happened yet again. My blog series all about large language models started getting a lot of traction in the final two weeks of September and generated about $800 in earnings, which brought me $20 within reach of my $1,000 goal. But of course, $980 is less than a thousand, so I technically did not hit this goal. My main takeaway from this experience is that entrepreneurship is a wild ride. And what I find helpful in the face of all this uncertainty and volatility 
is to find the work intrinsically rewarding. And for me, making content isn't about making money. While that is a nice upside to it, the main benefit that I get from it is that it gives me a way to structure and continue my learning, which is super important in a space that is as rapidly evolving as data science and AI. So that's how the first three months went as a full-time entrepreneur. Now here's my plan for the next three months. I again set three main goals for the quarter corresponding to each key pillar of my business. And if I manage to hit all these goals, I'll be in a place where my income will match what I made working full-time as a data scientist, which was a little more than $10,000 a month. I'll go through these goals one by one and talk more about why that goal is important and how I'm going to achieve it. So starting with the first, landing 20 hours a week of client work going into Q1. The reason that this goal is important is that the overwhelming majority of my revenue comes through consulting. This is about 90% or more of my business's revenue is from consulting engagements. My hope is I can hit this goal of 20 hours a week of work, relying solely on inbound leads coming from my YouTube videos blog posts, and other content that I put out there. However, given the unpredictable nature of content, this cannot be my only strategy. That's why if things aren't looking great halfway through the quarter, I'll start an outbound campaign to try to get more clients. What this could look like is reaching out to other freelancers in my network to see if they know of any prospective clients. This could be cold emailing or cold DMing local businesses. And finally, applying to contracts on Upwork. The next goal is is to put on nine to 12 community events. And this is about double the number of events that we did in Q3. And the idea is if we double the number of events, we'll also double the number of attendees and continue to grow all the different community channels. The reason growing the community is important is because the value of the community scales with the number of members. So the more people in the community, the more people you can learn from, the more people you can collaborate with, the more jobs are listed in our job board, the more projects are listed in our project board, the more people showing up to networking events, and all the other amazing things that can happen when you're interacting with like-minded people who are trying to go to the same place as you. And while the community doesn't generate any revenue directly, it actually costs me some money and a lot of time, it provides me with tremendous value in other ways, and hopefully it does the same for other people too. Three of the biggest benefits I found through running this community are as follows. First and foremost is learning. You can learn a tremendous amount from someone that's just a few steps ahead of you. I've learned a tremendous amount about freelancing and consulting from data scientists who have been doing this a bit longer than me. And on the flip side, passing along lessons to those who are a few steps behind you, in a sense, I find is intrinsically rewarding and helps me solidify my understanding of these concepts. Because a lot of the lessons of entrepreneurship you're not going to find in the textbook anywhere. And I find this type of information is best learned by talking directly to practitioners. The second big benefit for me of this community is support. In other words, sometimes it's great to just have someone to tell you you're not crazy. The entrepreneur's journey is definitely not the norm, which often leads to entrepreneurs being constantly misunderstood by friends, family, and others. However, that one stimulating conversation with someone that gets it, with someone that is on a similar journey to you, makes up for the 10 conversations with people that don't understand what you're doing. And the the third big benefit is alignment and collaboration. In other words, when you and the person next to you are going to the same place, that alignment naturally generates opportunities for collaboration that takes you both further, even faster than you could have gone alone. And the third big goal for this quarter is to keep up the content. More specifically, what that means is posting two blogs a week or two videos a week or one blog and one video a week, posting three to five times a week on LinkedIn and posting one to two times a week on Instagram and TikTok. While content generates some revenue for me, so about $1,000 a month at this point, the main financial upside of making content as a data scientist comes from the inbound leads that it generates for me. But of course, the leads aren't the main benefit of making content. Like I said before, the key benefit of making content for me is that it gives me a way to structure my learning and keep up with the rapidly evolving space of data science and AI. Not only does content force me to read articles, watch YouTube videos, write example code, do projects, using whatever new technique that I'm learning, but it also forces me to synthesize these learnings into a narrative, which gives me a tremendous
tremendous amount of clarity and understanding of these topics. There's one last thing that has given me a lot more clarity and a good perspective for looking at my goals for this quarter. Oftentimes with the uncertainty and volatility of entrepreneurship, things can get hard and it can be easy for me to lose perspective of why am I doing this? Why don't I just go back to a full-time job where I don't have to worry as much, I don't have to stress as much, the income is guaranteed, why put myself through all this trouble? And so what helps me in keeping a positive mindset is looking at all these goals through the lens of learning and giving. These two aspects of learning and giving makes it easier to maintain that positive mindset which could be elusive in the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. And so when things get hard and when things get uncomfortable, I can just remind myself that it's hard because I'm learning. It's hard because it's new. And then when I'm putting in a bunch of work for the community or I'm putting in a lot of work for content and maybe it feels like it's not worth it, reminding myself that you're helping someone. You're helping someone understand a complicated subject. You're helping someone level up their data science skills. You're giving someone the opportunity to speak to the community about their passions, about their expertise. You're giving a freelance client access to AI, giving them the opportunity to leverage these new technologies in their business. And I found that to be kind of like a superpower. You know, if you're just doing something for yourself, it's easy to give up. But if you're doing something for other people, it makes it easier to stay motivated and engaged in the work that you're doing. And so I'm leveraging both of these mindsets, learning and giving to help me stay engaged, stay productive and stay motivated this quarter. If you have any specific questions about my decision making for transitioning into entrepreneurship or how it's been so far or any questions on why I set my Q4 goals as I did, please drop those in the comment section below. I'm happy to share anything I've picked up along the way. And as always, thank you so much for your time and thanks for watching.